Hello, this is Direct Talk, and I'm Evan Sagal hosting the show. On today's session, I'm joined by Levan Chachoa, who is head of area office for WFP Tikrai. Levan, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me in your program. Let's begin with uh, WFP's major accomplishments in Tigray after the signing of the peace deal. Uh, since the signing of the Pretoria Peace Agreement and uh, reopening of these, uh, all these corridors, uh, WFP brought in close to 73,000 metric tons of food. Um, which, um, if for just uh, for you, your viewers, for me to explain it, translates into 4.3 million uh, rations. So it is enough for 4.3 million people. And uh, since November 22, 2022, we managed up to now, we managed to distribute two rounds of uh, food uh, to our population, to the areas where we are working, assisting close to 2.2 million people on their. Uh, uh, um, one round in November and then another round in December. And we just also, just a couple of days ago, we launched uh, another new round in Mekele, uh, which is primarily focused on uh, assisting IDPs in Mekele. And soon we'll also start uh, providing assistance to other um, the host population in other areas where we are operating. Just for, for information also I want to share with you, um, uh, the area in Tigra is divided between various food operators. WFP is covering northwestern zone, Mekele city, and some Waredas in the southern zone. The other part is covered by Joint Emergency Operation Program, which is led by uh, Catholic Relief Services. In addition to, of course, uh, bringing our food supplies, we also uh, facilitated importation or transportation of uh, supplies for other humanitarian actors. Uh, we facilitate transportation of close to 191,000 metric ton, uh, which translates to close to 5,000 trucks of long trucks for other humanitarian sector. And then uh, also we brought close to 1.4 million liters of fuel for humanitarian actors, for them to start uh, dispatching food and implementing their programs. These are some of the achievements that I can just list uh, from top of my head. But there are criticisms that the amount of aid reaching to Gray and the demand on the ground are disproportionate. What has the WFP done to address these huge humanitarian demands in the region? So just we just recently completed a new emergency food security assessment. Uh, we conducted this in 46 waredas of Tigray, uh, uh, which will establish the, uh, uh, the uh, needs for Tigray. Uh, basically, we will establish the prevalence of food insecurity, so proportion of people who are food insecure. These results will be available within next two weeks' time, which will be used by WFP and, of course, by other operators to do additional fundraising. So we hope that we can mobilize additional resources uh, so to, to support these people who are in need and relying on the humanitarian assistance. We have also received complaints that there are also problems in distribution, in distributing humanitarian aid that has already entered the region. We had some challenges at the beginning, soon after, you know, like signing of the peace deal. Of course, you know, situation will not change overnight. No? There were like new, new actors on the ground, new administration in certain areas. So it took us a bit of time to, to find a common language and, uh, and agree on certain numbers. So it was at the beginning some delays, but um, now the situation is more or less um, is, uh, is resolved and we have access to all our, our operational areas except for few Kebeles. Uh, there are some few Kebeles in the southern zone. Uh, there are some few Kebeles out of the Kese River where we couldn't dispatch food directly, but we, uh, we found some other solutions. So we established the food distribution points nearest to those Kebeles so people can access uh, food. So, but we are working together with OCHA as well as other humanitarian agencies to, to uh, get access to all these areas. You just distribute food in December, right? So it's we been distributed food. food. Yeah, yeah we we it's been three months. Yes. We distributed food uh, in November, uh, in between November and uh, December. Then it was another round we started also in December, which is still continuing in some of the areas. There were some areas where we had to uh, agree on the beneficiary figures and the uh, uh, food distribution points, etc., etc. So, which took us a bit of time for us to 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 accomplish the distributions within the time frame we were envisaging. But 
Now, as I mentioned, just a couple of uh, days ago, we launched another round of food distribution in Mekele, starting from Mekele, assisting IDPs. And then uh, within the next one week, 10 days, we'll be starting this new round of distribution in other areas of Tigra, in our operational areas. So we hope, we hope, since we have now brought uh, all these commodities that we require for the next round into uh, Tigray, and we also have uh, corridors now accessible from southern areas, from Kombolche as well from Gondar. We hope that we can uh, start more regular food distributions and uh, respect these six to seven weeks of um, round uh, for, for distributions. So my question is, wasn't that supposed to be monthly? No, unfortunately, yes. We've been advocating for a monthly distribution, but uh, it is a national um, uh, kind of uh, approach everywhere in, in Ethiopia the distributions are done in, in, in rounds rounds of 45 days and we are following those rounds as well we've, we've been advocating jointly with donors to to move from round base to monthly distributions at least for those um, who are residing in camps and IDPs so far um, we have not been successful in negotiating this but uh, we are still keeping this on the table for us to, make, to move to monthly distribution, at least for those people who are in really dire needs. Uh, so you told me that you're, you're starting distributing food in Mala. So, so what, how about the people in those Western Tigray? There's, there's still ongoing distributions in those areas. And also what we, what we are waiting is there for new figures. As I mentioned, we just recently completed the emergency food security needs assessment, which will establish the new needs. And then based on new needs, we will make the planning and we will dispatch food according to the new figures. So within uh, two weeks maximum, we, we are supposed to start also another round uh, in other areas. People from Northern Centigrade who are under the occupation of Eritrean forces told us that they are not receiving food. Well, uh, I don't know which areas you are referring because in all our areas, in the, in the areas with, that we are covering in Northwest zone, uh, everywhere people are receiving food, uh, including uh, those occupied or those where they are presidents of armed groups. We establish food distribution points outside of inaccessible areas and people are reaching those locations to collect their food. Tell us about your, en your engagements with IDPs. And uh, IDPs Integra say the assistance they have received is, is far from the advocate. Well, uh, the thing is that, you know, like uh, during the conflict, the population was quite highly mobile. So there is uh, like a uh, one day family is here, next day they are in Adigra, the third day they are in Shire. So there was a quite lots of movement of IDPs throughout the conflict period, but especially just before the signing of uh, peace agreement. So initial reports were that uh, close to 750,000 IDPs were hosted in Mekele. And it was a bit uh, you know, difficult for us to also just trust this figure just coming from unknown sources. So, we insisted for, on verification of those numbers and we worked closely with the city administration as well as IUM and other agencies to establish more accurate numbers. And, um, and finally the figures uh, came down to close to 200,000 people from 750,000. So of course we, we do this kind of routine checks and the balances. Since we have limited resources, we would like these resources to go to most in needy one rather than just emptying our warehouses and just distributing food. We do sometimes also, sometimes we inject food in locations where the food availability is the issue and so people can afford. But in this specific case, we wanted this food to be delivered to the right people. So that's, uh, that's why there were some delays in certain locations, but IDPC in most of the locations, in, if not all locations, they are on top of the priority list. They are the first one to get followed by returnees and then host population. Okay, so is the WFP providing non-food items to the IDPs? No, unfortunately, because of our mandate, our focus is only on food uh, and nutrition support. Uh, but we help the other agencies to facilitate the importation and as well transportation of the non-food items. But for us, uh, uh, at this stage, it's only food assistance. We'll be moving soon to support the, in the livelihood recovery, uh, etc. So if you call it as non-food, cash is part of non-food, but it still will be for, for food. So we are considering also maybe introducing cash and vouchers where it, uh, it gives comparative advantage in terms of outcomes and so on. So, so, but it will be still limited within food and nutrition assistance. So w what are you doing now to expedite your efforts so as to reach 
the ITPs in the right time and with a huge amount? Uh, as I said, now we don't have any somehow any obstacles for us to, to go to more regular distribution. So provided that we, we manage to do enough of fundraising, because fundraising is also one of the uh, concerns for us. Uh, and we are also getting uh, first indications that you know there will be gradual reduction of uh, funding for this kind of unconditional food assistance. So that's why we are in parallel track. We are already exploring the possibility of reintroducing recovery activities so people can be supported, uh, so they can go back to agriculture and do planting and uh, restore agriculture assets and so on. Uh, so that's uh, where we're focused. Okay, finally, let me give you a chance if you have any message you wanted to, to convey. To no, I would, like, uh, I would like to thank all our donors and um, I think uh, the needs are still high. So at least we need to bridge the gap until next harvest period. So we will need still additional funding to, to cover these needs, nutrition as well as food needs. At the same time, also would like also to um, invite the other donors who are working on more recovery activities, etc., to support us uh, um, and uh, um, for us to start recovery activities uh, quite soon, so to help the Tigrayan population. As for the authorities, again, uh, we are glad that uh, they found a finally a language of peace, and uh, we hope they will stick to the agreement they have, and the peace will prevail in Ethiopia. Ivan, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your time and thanks for having me in your program.